Hey everyone, I just want to talk to you a bit about Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. And that verse says that Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. Now, I want to dissect this verse and we can, we can break it down into three key areas. So, number one. So the first area is what Ezra did and what we can apply to our lives is Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. He prepared his heart to seek the word. And to, to dive into this, we need to understand what the Bible means when it says heart. So the word heart is mentioned over 900 times in the King James translation, but it's not actually talking about your blood pumping organ within your body. When the Bible talks about heart, the actual word that it uses is cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A. -A. And what that means is your character, your inner self, your mind, your will. What the word heart is talking about is your soul. And the soul is made up of three parts, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when it says that Ezra prepared his heart, what Ezra was doing was preparing his mind, his will, and his emotions. It's basically making a premeditated choice. You're making your mind up saying, I am going to seek the word. And that goes along with several other scriptures. We can pull in Deuteronomy 30, 19. It says, I've set before you life and death, both blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. It is a choice. It is a premeditated choice that we must make to get into the word of God. We're making our mind up. We're, we're pushing our will aside. We're taking on the will of God and we're saying, no, I'm conforming my will to you, God, and I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God each and every day. I'm going to get into the word. I'm going to seek you and your face through your word. You're making that premeditated choice in your heart, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So why is that important? Well, if you look up Proverbs 4.23 in the Amplified Translation, it says to keep and guard your heart with all vig vigilance and above all else, guard it above all else, for out of it flows the springs of life. Guard your heart above all else. So above everything that you guard, you can think of all the things in your life that you may guard, your spouse, your children, your possessions, money, cars, home, your job, Think of anything that you may be guarding. Think of something that you've got hidden away in a safe somewhere that you want to protect and keep safe. Above that, you're to guard your heart. Why? Why are we to guard our heart above, above everything else? Well, because it determines the course of your life. Out of it flow the springs of life. Another proverb says that a calm and undisturbed heart and mind are the health and life to the body. They're your health, they're your life. Guard your heart above all else. Above everything that you guard, guard your heart. And you do that by preparing your heart, making that premeditated choice, premeditated decision that I'm going to seek after the Lord. You must do that. And then that takes you into number two. So the second thing that Ezra did was, after he prepared his heart to seek the word, seek the Lord through his word, was, I'm going to do the word. No matter what the word says, once I seek the word, once I get revelation of that word, I'm going to apply it to my life and I'm going to do it. And that's very important. James chapter 1 verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, that you be deceived. If you actually get into the Word, you seek the Lord through, seek the Lord's face through His Word, and you, you make the decision, you know what? I, I read that. It, it flowed through, and I don't want to obey it. I don't want to do it, and I'm not going to. You open yourself up to a spirit of deception, and now the enemy can come in and still kill and destroy in your life because you've opened yourself up to that spirit of deception just because you did not obey the Word. So it's very key, the second step that Ezra did, I'm going to do the Word. Once I seek the Lord through the Word, I'm going to do the Word. And that flows in line with John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do my Word. So make that premeditated choice. 
to get into the Word. Prepare your heart. I'm going to get into the Word. And already make up your mind beforehand. I'm going to do the Word. And that moves you into step number three. So the third thing that Ezra did was he taught others. And that goes along with Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus is giving the disciples the Great Commission. And in that, verse 20 says, Go out and teach others to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus was saying, hey, I'm going to share great and mighty things with you. I will share great and mighty things with you. I'm entrusting that to you, but I, I want you to go out and teach those things to other people, other people that may not know those things. If you see a brother or sister that, that is falling in an area, encourage them. And as the Holy Spirit leads, share the scripture with them. Say, hey, God's word says this. This is how you should be responding in this situation. This is how you should handle this situation. Share the word of God with them. Teach others what God has taught you. That's what Ezra did. That's the third thing that Ezra did. And that's what God is looking for. God is looking for someone. Second Chronicles, verse 16, Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9 says that God is, God's eye is running to and fro across the whole earth to show himself strong to the one whose heart is loyal to him. God is looking for those people that are willing to do everything that God tells them to do. Make up your mind today. Make that premeditated choice. I am going to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I am going to get in His Word each and every morning. And then I'm going to do the Word. And then third, I'm going to teach the Word. Whatever is revealed to me, I will do it, and then I will teach it. But that all comes with making that premeditated choice. And guys, making that premeditated choice is coming up with the place that you're going to seek the Lord, coming up with the time that you're going to seek the Lord. Have your Bible ready. Ha have a notebook ready to write down anything that God reveals to you. And if you have kids, if you're in a situation where uh, you want to wake up early in the morning, but your kids are awake, or, you know, I've got to go to work. You know, if you have to leave at 7 in the morning to go to work, it takes you 45 minutes to get ready. So you should have to get up and start getting ready by 6.15. Well, make up your mind, I'm going to get up 15 minutes early. I'm going to get up at 6, or I'm going to get up 30 minutes early. I'm going to get up at 545 and devote that 30 minutes to the Lord, seeking His face, and then decide today, I'm going to do whatever is revealed to me, and then I will teach others what God reveals to me. If you want to see God's hand in your life, be a devoted follower to Him. Prepare your heart to seek after Him and do His Word. I guarantee you He will not let you down. He will show up and He will show Himself strong to you every time, every time. If you seek Him, you will find Him. If you seek Him with your whole heart, plan your day out. Prepare your heart, prepare your way to seek the Lord. If you don't have a time set, let's write it down. Let's say, I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning and every morning after that to seek the Lord. And I promise you, as you do that, you will find that you want to spend more and more time with the Lord. But start small and build yourself up. Make your plan. Prepare your heart to seek the Word of the Lord, to do the Word, and then to teach the Word.